Hello everyone. Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Welcome to 360 on History. My name is Simon. Please check out my website for podcasts and blogs and join me on social media. Today we are doing a history related show. Reading up on empires like the Roman, Mughal or the Ottoman empires is one of my favorite things. And I'm sure many of you would already know much about these. Today I want to talk about a royal family that is probably not as well known as the rest but they were extremely influential. After all, the assassination of their Archduke was the catalyst for the First World War. I'm talking of the House of Habsburg, an initially nondescript family from the mountains of Switzerland that rose up to become rulers of the Austro-Hungarian and Spanish empires and ruled over various parts of Europe for 700 years. I find these guys extremely fascinating not because of their insistence on marrying within the family, which resulted in some interesting ailments and deformities, but also because of the names by which they came to be known. Who were the Habsburgs? Well, as I said before, they were one of the most influential royal houses in Europe. Not only did they occupy the throne of the Holy Roman Empire for about 300 years, they also ruled over Spain, Portugal, Bohemia, Austria, Hungary, Croatia, and several areas of the Netherlands and Italy, as well as over Spanish colonies in the Americas. Here's a fun fact for you. Philippines is named after King Philip II. You know, the one who married Queen Mary of England? He was a Habsburg. And because he married Queen Mary, he was also King of England. They started small though. The story goes that the name Habsburg is derived from the castle of Habsburg or Hawks Castle, which was built in 1020 AD, overlooking the Ahr River in Switzerland by Count Radbot and his brother-in-law Werner, Bishop, Bishop of Strasbourg. Radbot's son, Otto II, was the first to take on the name Habsburg and added Count of Habsburg to his title. I'm not going to go through all of the emperors because there were many, but if you're interested, I'm adding a link to the family tree on the Austrian line in the description. There were two lines, the Austrian and the Spanish. So for those of you who really want to know about all the emperors, just click on that. It also has some influential Habsburg ladies. From the relatively small beginnings in the early 11th century, the family gained momentum in the next couple of centuries around their main seat at Habsburg Castle primarily through politically beneficial arranged marriages and also by gaining other political privileges such as countships. By the 13th century, they had stepped, stepped into high positions in the church too. And in 1273, when Rudolf IV became Rudolf I as the Roman German king, he moved the family seat to the Duchy of Austria, which the Habsburgs ruled till the end of the First World War in 1918. Obviously, as per the prevalent custom in the Middle Ages, there was a lot of political intrigue and fights for the throne, which was passed on through male members of the family only. Now, moving on to the 15th century. In 1452, the Habsburg added the title of Holy Roman Emperor to their repertoire, with the crowning of Frederick III as Holy Roman Emperor by Pope Nicholas V. Continuing with the practice of politically motivated marriages, Frederick married his son Maximilian to Mary of Burgundy, thus eventually acquiring rulership over the Low Countries, which are basically Netherlands, Luxembourg and Belgium. Maximilian's son, and this is where we start with the amazing names, Philip the Handsome became the ruler of Burgundy in 1493. Philip was then married to and here is another fantastic name, Joanna the Mad of Castile. Now, Joanna was the daughter of Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand of Spain, famous for defeating the last vestiges of Andalusian Muslim rulers and implementing the infamous Spanish Inquisition. Joanna was a bit of a rebel against her parents' Catholicism, and her mother was not happy about it, punishing Joanna brutally for what she termed was heresy. 
Her father later on had her termed insane so that she would not be able to rule Castile, which is why she got her moniker, I think. From my perspective, I think it was the parents who were a bit mad, not Joanna. As a child, she was known to be highly intelligent. As an adult, she was constantly controlled or confined by men in her family, and the story of her madness remains controversial. Joanna and Philip had six children, and the eldest became Emperor Charles V. He not only inherited Austria, the Low Countries, and Southern Italy, but also Castile and Aragon, and with them, he became ruler of the Spanish colonies in the Americas. By this time, Hungary and Bohemia had also been added to the empire, again through marriages. And by the time the Charles V took over in 1519, the Habsburgs had become a world power, ruling an empire on which the sun never set, because it was so extensive that at least one part of their territory always had daylight. Charles V ruled till 1556, and then he abdicated, splitting his empire between his son Philip and his brother Ferdinand, leaving it in the Spanish and Austro-Hungarian lines. This is where the two lines got started. Philip got the Spanish side and became Philip II of Spain and its colonies, while Ferdinand I became King of Bohemia, Hungary, and Archduke of Austria, as well as the Holy Roman Emperor. The Habsburgs are now most famous for inbreeding because they frequently married cousins and even nieces in order to consolidate their power. This inbreeding resulted in mental and physical deformities, such as an enlarged lower jaw and an extended chin, known as the Habsburg jaw, a large nose, called the Habsburg nose, and even an outward protruding lower lip, or Habsburg lip. A study of 3,000 family members over 16 generations by the University of Santiago suggests that inbreeding directly led to their extinction. And a new study that came out in 2019 also confirms that the infamous Habsburg jaw was a direct result of inbreeding. Because of this inbreeding, the gene pool became increasingly limited. The last ruler of the Spanish Habsburgs, Charles the Bewitched, was severely disabled from birth, and his genome is comparable to a child born to a brother and sister. One biographer said that his head was enormous and misshapen and that his jaw stood out so much his upper and lower teeth could not meet. He was not even able to chew. He died without any children and with him the Spanish line also died out. Charles the Bewitched is now more famous for his deformities and the Spanish War of Succession that followed his death. In addition to inbreeding related succession crises, there were other things going on in Europe that impacted the Habsburgs. First of all, the Protestant Reformation in Germany was causing all sorts of problems in Europe in the 16th and 17th centuries. The Habsburgs were Catholics and did not subscribe to the Protestant agenda, especially in the Netherlands and Bohemia. Which brings us nicely to the defenestration of Prague, another fantastic word. This was basically Bohemian resistance to Habsburg authority. What happened was that in 1617, the heir apparent to the throne, the very Catholic Ferdinand of Styria, who became Frederick II of Austria, exerted his control over Protestant Bohemia and stopped the construction of some Protestant churches and then had their assembly dissolved. On May the 23rd, 1618, four Catholic emissaries arrived at the Bohemian Chancellery to discuss this with Protestant leaders. Two of the four were deemed innocent of playing any part in stopping the construction of the churches. The remaining two accepted responsibility and awaited any punishment, which was for them to be chucked out of the window. And that's what defenestration means. They survived the 70-foot drop, mainly because they fell on a large pile of manure but this event contributed to the start of the 30 years war a brutally a brutal religiously motivated war resulting in 8 million deaths so back to the decline of the habsburgs we have inbreeding and catholic protestant fights but because the habsburgs ruled over an area up to hungary 
they also had to deal with the Ottomans who kept crossing borders from the Balkans into Central Europe. The Ottomans had already laid siege to Vienna in 1529 and then again in 1683. Both of which, by the way, were thwarted not just by the Habsburgs, but also their allies. And all of this was happening while the various European powers, Britain, the Dutch, the French, were vying for control over Europe or trying to curtail each other's powers. So, alliances were fluid and kept changing as and when required. All of this eroded Habsburg hegemony in Europe. The Spanish line had to contend with France taking over its territories, and then it fizzled out completely with the death of Charles the Bewitched, leading to the Spanish War of Succession. The Austrian Habsburg line died out in its male heirs in 1740 with the death of Charles VI, and in the last female heir of the male line in 1780 with the death of his daughter, Maria Theresa. Charles VI had changed the practice of succession only through the male heir and had named his daughter as, as his heir by promulgating what is known as the Pragmatic Sanction. The other powers in Europe recognized this, not because they had suddenly become open-minded, but because they saw this as an opportunity to further encroach upon Habsburg dominion. Maria Theresa became a pawn in this game. By the time her father died, the Habsburg Empire was broke, low in prestige and power, and beset by conflict within its territories. But this did not completely stop the Habsburgs. Maria Theresa faced invasion from Prussia, Bavaria and Saxony, basically from the German kingdoms to the north of Austria. She lost some territory but retained most of what her father had left and her marriage to Francis Stephen of Lorraine turned the line into Habsburg Lorraine, which continues to this day. Marie Antoinette, you know, she of let them eat cake fame was their 11th daughter and her marriage to Louis XVI of France again shows how marriage was used to make political allies. By the way, Marie Antoinette never said that line. Napoleon dissolved the Holy Roman Empire in 1806, so their German territories were lost to them. But the Habsburgs still ruled parts of Europe, mainly Austria, but also Tuscany and Modena, and benefited from the Congress of Vienna, which took place in 1814 and 1815 to sort out the French problem after the Napoleonic Wars. The House of Habsburg basically became the Austrian Empire, engaged in constant conflict with Prussia. In 1867, Emperor Franz Joseph gave Hungary equal status with Austria and it became the dual monarchy of Austro-Hungary. Various assassinations followed, including that of Franz Joseph's brother in Mexico. Now we're coming to the final bit. In 1878, Austro-Hungarian forces occupied Bosnia-Herzegovina and formally annexed it in 1908. This made Serbia very angry because it wanted Bosnia for itself. In 1914, Archduke Ferdinand, the heir to the Austro-Hungarian throne, was shot during a visit to the Bosnian capital Sarajevo by a Serb nationalist. Two months later, the First World War began. World War I led to a complete dismemberment of the Habsburg Empire and the last emperor, Charles, only had Austria and Hungary to rule. He tried unsuccessfully to get out of the war and was eventually exiled to Switzerland in 1918, the family having come full circle. Then he was deposed by the Austrian parliament in 1919 and sent into exile again to Madeira after he tried to retake the throne. He died poor and of pneumonia in Madeira. His wife Zita went into mourning and wore black for the rest of her life till her death at the age of 96. In 1919, when they deposed Charles, the Austrian Republic also passed the Habsburg Law, which barred any member of the family to return to Austria unless they renounced their claim to the throne. In the 1960s, the head of the house, Otto, was allowed to return after he renounced all claims. Otto's son, Karl von Habsburg Lorraine, is the current head of the family and an Austrian politician. See, I told you this family was fascinating. The links in the description also have portraits and you can see the famous Habsburg jaw and nose. 
there is also a link to the world of the Habsburgs website. These guys basically ruled over large swathes of Europe and influenced a whole lot of history, but they are not as well known as some of the others. Thank you for joining me on 360 on History. See you next time. Thank you.